Hey, what's going on everyone? John Egan here from Dreamfire Films. Let's make some muzzle flashes. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to make muzzle flashes from the fractal noise effect. This comes with After Effects, so there's going to be no third party anything required. You can even download this clip down in the description to practice on. After we've made the first muzzle flash, we're going to create some environmental lighting and some barrel smoke. And lastly, I'll show you how to duplicate and randomize each effect for fully automatic gunfire. I'm going to be using Adobe After Effects Creative Cloud, the 13.1.1.3 release. After you've brought your footage into After Effects, drag and drop it onto the New Comp button at the bottom of the Project File window. You may get this notice about ray tracing, you can just hit OK, and it will automatically make a comp based on that clip's aspect ratio and frame rate. It always renames the comp after the clip, so let's rename it up here in the Project Files window again. Hit Enter and name it Footage, comma, ENV Lighting, that's going to stand for Environmental Lighting, comma, Muzzle flash side. Now I name it this because even though we're not going to have a lot of compositions, it's good to know what exactly is in each of your compositions. Now we want to make a black solid, click back into your timeline, and you can go up top to layer, new, solid, but I like to stay down here in the timeline where I can right click, go to new, and go to solid. Name this one muzzle flash side. and hit OK. Now let's put some fractal noise on it. Like usual you can go up top to affect noise and grain and fractal noise but again I find it faster to just go over here to the effects controls panel right click and go straight to noise and grain and fractal noise. Let's set the fractal noise contrast to 1000 and next we want to change the brightness so you can actually just hit tab and you're ready to change the brightness type in negative 77 and this is now the pool of shapes you get to choose from for your new muzzle flashes. I find it easiest to choose an area with a lot of white such as this area right here because that's going to give you the most options later. So we're going to want to move this area to the center. Zoom out with your scroll wheel, go to the transform drop down in the fractal noise settings, click the offset turbulence crosshairs icon and click just once somewhere around the center. Now you've got this crosshair that you can move. Move this crosshair until the section that you want gets to the center but goes a little bit further past it. Under the transform drop down again on the left you have scale. Click and drag that to start scaling it up until the section that you want is almost as big as the frame. It's probably going to go past the center but you can still see it and guess where it is. For me it's at about 350. Move that crosshair again at the bottom right until this section that you want is centered. Back in the settings, set the complexity to 12. Alright, let's zoom back into it. I go down here to the bottom left of the composition window where there's this percentage. Click that, go to fit, and it'll fit to the window. Now let's get the pen tool. You can go up top to the pen icon, or you can just hit G. Mask around the shape that you chose. We're going to change this later so it can be a rough mask. If it's hard to see the mask because of the color, just hit M to bring up the mask settings in the timeline below. Click on the color next to mask and change it to something more visible. Now I want to feather the edges of this mask. So because you have this muzzle flash selected, just hit M and M again really quickly and you'll get all of the mask properties. I like to set the feather to 50. Now change the muzzle flash's mode to add. If you don't have the mode here, you may need to hit the toggle switches and modes button to get it. We're done with the pen tool for now, so hit V to get your regular selection tool back. Now we just want to work with the footage for a second, so hide your muzzle flash by hitting the eyeball that's all the way to the left of it on the timeline. Now in your footage, scrub around until you find the spot where your actor pretends to shoot the gun for the first time. You should be giving it a little bit of a kick. 
In the final version of this film here, Nerf Rebellion, I threw two muzzle flashes in the beginning, really quickly, right around this area here, just to add to the intensity of the shot. Even though my actor didn't exactly pretend to shoot the gun there, you can't really notice in the final edit. So I'm going to do the same thing I did for the film, and put the first muzzle flash starting at the third frame of this clip. If you have your own footage that you shot, and your actor is pretending to give the gun a kick, kind of like right here, you can actually make it a little more dramatic looking by taking out one frame here. I'll show you. Find the frame right before he pulls the gun back into his shoulder, or gives it a kick. Select that footage, hit Command Shift D or Control Shift D on a PC. That'll cut your footage at the playhead. Then get rid of that one frame by dragging the left side of that clip over once and sliding the whole rest of the clip back to fill in that space. And now what you have is a more powerful looking kick. However, with my footage, this isn't going to work because it's so shaky, it's really easy to notice if one frame is missing. So I'm just going to undo that. So as I was saying earlier, I'm going to put my first muzzle flash on the third frame. Go ahead and select your muzzle flash again. Hit that eyeball all the way to the left to unhide it. Now trim the muzzle flash up to this frame with Alt Open Bracket. Don't get that confused with Open Parentheses but open bracket, which is probably underneath the plus sign on your keyboard. Next, we want the anchor point tool. You can get that up top. It looks like the arrow's pointing in all different directions inside of a box. It's also called the pan behind tool because it has that function. Or you can hit Y and there you have it. Next, go over to your muzzle flash and find the anchor point that looks like a little crosshairs. Select it, drag it over to the left somewhere or wherever your muzzle flash is going to be connecting with the barrel. This is going to make things easier later on for rotating and scaling. Now, if you're making more of a straight-on muzzle flare, either for a gun that's pointing directly at the camera or away from the camera, simply put this anchor point closer to the center and make the whole muzzle flare a little more rounded. Hit V to get your selection tool back, and move it over to the barrel. Rotate the muzzle flash with the rotation tool. It looks like a counterclockwise arrow up top left, or hit W for it. Line it up with the direction of the gun. Hit V to get the selection tool again. Now we want some radial blur. With the muzzle flash selected, come over here to the effects controls panel. Right click, go to blur and sharpen, and radial blur. Now we want to move the center point of the radial blur. Do that by clicking the little red cross in the little red circle that's over here in the composition window. It's going to be right on top of the muzzle flash. Then just drag it to the same place you've set the anchor point. In the effects controls panel, set the radial blur amount to 32. We want to change the type to zoom. And now add some CC toner. Right click in this effects panel, go to color correction and CC toner. Let's change the highlights, click on the color box. We want it to be a goldish color. I simply copied the color code I used last time in the original Nerf project. And you can actually do the same thing. It's over here in this box that starts with a pound sign. It's also called a hex triplet code or an HTML color code. The code's already selected. We just want to replace this one with capital F, capital F, capital D, 278. And that'll give us that gold color we're looking for for the inside. Let's come over here and change the mids to more of a hot red color. The color code I used for this one is capital F41900. And hit OK. Great. Let's throw some glow on there. Right click again, go to stylize, and glow. Change the glow threshold to 65. We can just hit tab like before to jump to the next setting, which is glow radius. We want that one to be 153. Hit tab again for glow intensity and set this one to 0.8. Nice, this makes the muzzle flash really bright. Now because my actor and cameraman are both moving, I'm gonna add some directional blur to make the muzzle flash appear to be moving as well. 
Let's close a few of these effects that we're not using at the moment, like Radial Blur and CC Toner. Let's right click, go to Blur and Sharpen, and Directional Blur. I like to up the directional blur amount to try to match that of my actor or, or the gun or anything else that's moving in the shot. You might have to eyeball it a little bit by pushing it really far and then bringing it back until it looks right. Something around 9 looks good. I then use this directional wheel here to try to mimic the blur direction of everything else in the shot. Alright, great. If we want the end of the muzzle flash to taper off now, we can use a subtraction mask to feather off the edge. With your muzzle flash selected, let's zoom out a bit. Move the frame over by clicking and dragging on the frame with the scroll wheel on your mouse. If that isn't working for you, you can go up to the top left and grab the little hand icon. Or hit H to get the hand icon, and then drag the frame around. And get our pen tool by hitting G. Now draw a rounded mask around the front of the flare like this. And come out to the far right and close it up. Go down here into the timeline, find this mask, and set it to subtraction. In this subtraction mask, let's set the feather to 416. Yeah! Hit V to get our selection tool back. Now with the flash selected, make it last for one frame by hitting Alt, Close Bracket. Go ahead and make everything full screen again by setting the percentage to fit in the lower left. Next we want to have this muzzle flash light up the environment around it. Let's start out by taking our actor footage down here at the bottom of the timeline, duplicating it with Command or Control D, select the one on top, hit Enter, name it Environmental Glow, and trim it to one frame with Alt Open Bracket and Alt Close Bracket. Now let's go over here to the Effects Controls panel again, right click, Go to Color Correction and get your levels. And now you've got these three little arrows to control it. Go ahead and take the little arrow all the way on the right, that one's your highlights, and bring it in by a lot. Then just crush the shadows a little bit by bringing this left one in by a little. Now come back down here in the timeline, get your flash layer, go up to its effects panel, Click on CC Toner, copy that, Control or Command C. Go back over to your environmental glow layer and just paste with Command V. Back in the timeline again, go ahead and set your environmental glow layer's mode to add. Now the fun part. We want to mask off the actor and any environment that might receive light. In my shot, that wall is too far, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to add lighting on the actor and the gun. Get your pen tool with G again, and start drawing a mask around the things and people that are going to receive the light. Be sure to stay away from the edges of the objects or people, because these masks are going to get feathered later. For this shot, I just have to draw around the gun, his left forearm, the fingers on his right hand, and his face. When you click and drag with the pen tool, you automatically get these two handles. But if you want one of the handles to move independently of the other, hold Command on a Mac or Control on a PC to turn the cursor into like a triangle, and click and drag on one of the handles. I can imagine how thrilling it is to watch me draw these, but I'm going to speed it up. And there you go. Alright, when you've got that done, hit V to get your selection tool back. Go ahead and hide the masks by hitting the Toggle Mask and Shape Path Visibility button. It's the little icon down here at the bottom of your composition window that kind of looks like a mask. Alright, with your environmental glow layer selected down in the timeline, let's open up the masks by hitting M and M again really quickly. 
Select the first and then shift select the last and you'll get all of them. Then just set the feather of one of them to 100 and it will change all of them. Now we want to change the mask opacities on each of them individually. For this shot I'm going to change the gun mask, which is the first one, to 85% opacity and all the others to 65%. Now let's go over to the Environmental Glow Layers Effects Controls panel. Let's change this layer's CC Toner settings a little bit. Select the Highlights color box and make it a little darker or just a little closer to the top right. For the midtones, we want to make it a little lighter by moving it closer to the top left. And now we want to brighten up the entire frame by adding an orange solid. Down here in your timeline, go ahead and right click and go to New Solid. Name this one Frame Brightening. And instead of going into the usual color box, we'll grab the eyedropper that's right next to it. And then just select the color of the CC Toner Highlights that's over here in the Effects panel. Alright, that's great. Go ahead and hit OK. And trim this one to one frame with Alt Open Bracket and Alt Close Bracket. Be sure to go to its mode in the timeline and set it to Screen. And now over on the left in the timeline, I like to change this layer's label color to orange. Make sure it's underneath the muzzle flash and above the environmental lighting layer. And the last thing for this guy is to hit T and change its opacity setting to 15%. And now the whole frame lights up when a shot is fired. It's just another one of those little details that help make this effect believable. Alright, in part two I'm going to go over barrel smoke and how to easily make multiple muzzle flashes for automatic fire. Hey, if you could, give me a like, a subscribe, and a comment, and I'll keep bringing you videos. Alright guys, catch you later.